Welcome back to our series on what to expect in ranked mode in Splatoon 2. Last time we talked about our newest players in C rank, and today we're graduating up to B rank. I'm still working with the same switch I used for the C rank video, and ranking it up through B rank so I can observe the behaviors of players at this level, identify patterns, and help you understand what you might want to think about and work on as you make your way up. Hey, so aren't you basically just smurfing? Yeah, but like, it's for the kids. Before we get into the game itself, remember what we said in the C rank video about your mindset. When you play, as in all things, be humble, be willing to change, be reflective. Keep yourself from dwelling on negative feelings or letting them influence your play. The further you get in ranked, the harder this'll be, because you'll have sunk more and more time into the game and you'll feel that more and more of your ego rides on your success. This happens to everyone, but it doesn't have to ruin the experience for anyone. The C rank video didn't do much in the way of comparing C rank to the other ranks, because C rank players have no point of comparison to work with. They're just trying to get oriented. But I think now it's useful to take a look back and forth between C and A ranks so that we can see where we've come from and where we're going. When I was ranking up my personal Splatoon 2 file, playing the game for the first time, I recall the jump from B rank to A rank being significantly more difficult than any other individual transition. Yes, S plus is a heck of a grind, but the skill level ramps up way more gradually there. Going from B plus to A minus, it felt like players were aiming better, understanding the game better, and pushing the pace of the game faster than I was ready for. I spent some time going back and forth between B and A before I developed more mechanical skill. While some of it really does just come from playing the game and practicing until you're better, understanding what you're trying to achieve can help speed up your improvement a lot. Let's get started talking about some patterns we see in B rank and how to elevate yourself from them. When B rank players engage in combat, there's a combination of issues I tend to see that leaves them very vulnerable. We'll call it walk and shoot syndrome. We'll start with the obvious mechanical part of this here. Players with walk and shoot syndrome will fight by walking around the map and shooting their main weapon. You may reasonably be thinking here, well, okay, what other options are there? In Splatoon, you can't fire your main weapon from squid form, so you have to be standing up. You want to shoot your opponent before they shoot you, right? So you should just always be shooting, right? And then walk around a little bit to make yourself harder to hit? Well firstly, jumping and shooting, like this A rank player, is actually better at making you hard to hit. So start practicing that, especially if you play a shorter mid-range weapon that's going to be in other people's faces. But more importantly, a big part of the reason that walk and shoot syndrome is a problem is that players who have it never try to disengage from bad situations. Compare these two clips here. The first one happened in B rank, and the second one happened in A rank. Now I get four consecutive splats or assists in both of them, but the A-rank players make it so much more mechanically difficult for me. I miss a lot more shots, I'm forced to move more defensively, and one of the A-rank players actually only went down because my teammate caught them on the other side of the tower. Since it was that messy, you can also see that their teammates are already spawning in by the time I get the fourth one, so they aren't losing map presence for as long as the B-rank team did. If you're going to lose a fight, you don't have to play the game yet, just run away. It'll save you the 10 to 20 seconds that it's going to take you to respawn and get back to a position where you're relevant to the game again. Even if you don't splat anyone, that time you're able to stay on the map is almost always more important to the goal of winning the game than committing to a fight. If I had stood still and tried to fight this player who dropped down on me, they probably would have won simply because they got the drop on me and could have hit their shots sooner but I moved away from them to take away that advantage. Once they put a couple bombs in play and it was getting dangerous, I didn't give them a chance to fight it out. I painted my feet to allow myself to move, and kept this ramp between them and me, and I was able to back away. Tunnel vision is a key part of walk and shoot syndrome. I can tell you exactly what these B rank players from the earlier clip are thinking. They're panicking because the Rainmaker is getting close to the goal, and so they're making a desperate, careless attempt to rush at them and take them out so they can at least stop the push. 
Even if they go down, they figure, at least they stopped the other team from scoring more. The problem is that with this mindset, all they're trying to see and interact with is the Rainmaker Carrier. They let themselves get overwhelmed and try to only focus on one thing. So when I show up in front of the player they're gunning for and I start shooting them, they're not stopping what they were planning on doing to deal with me. Their aim never shifts from the Rainmaker Carrier. They all go down and allow an easy KO because no one disengaged from the danger that I posed to them. There are a lot of other situations I saw where B-rank players would tunnel on the objective or on a fight they'd already decided to take that enabled me to get the upper hand over them. Like I said in the C-rank video, you need to see what's going on very quickly in this game. And if you're not recognizing that you're in danger from enemy fire, bombs, or specials in time to do something about it, that needs to be a big focus as you play. That said, the point here isn't that you should always just run away as soon as you encounter danger. You need to disengage on a smaller scale, even in a fight you've committed to. If your opponent got their aim on you first, you will almost always lose if you have walk and shoot syndrome. There are some exceptions. Some weapons do damage so quickly that they can splat someone who started shooting them first. Splatlings are forced to walk and shoot due to the charge mechanic, so they use a ridiculous amount of run speed up gear to compensate and stay mobile. But for most situations, walking just isn't enough to throw off someone's aim at the level you're trying to play at. You're too big a target that moves too slowly. If you stop shooting for just a split second to move unpredictably and actually start making them miss, now you might be able to turn the fight around. You know how you're moving better than they do. So once you've changed the line of fire between the two of you, you'll have a better idea how to adjust your aim, and you'll probably be shooting them before they can readjust their aim and start shooting you. Start developing a reflex that whenever you start getting shot, you immediately dodge somewhere. Start pressing the buttons you need to get out of their line of fire before you even know where it's coming from. But also work on figuring out where it's coming from as fast as possible so you know the right direction to go. A-rank players are hardly perfect at this yet. I was generally able to keep up the pressure and catch them, and sometimes the way they disengaged didn't put them at an advantage. But they have the right idea. Starting to try this, even though you won't be good at it yet, is the way you practice it and get better at it. I'm probably going to address aim in every single one of these videos. Splatoon is a shooter. Your aim is the most important mechanic to train. Get used to motion aim, so you can snap your aim around faster than this stick player. Get into the practice room for at least a few minutes at the beginning of every play session, and don't just work on shooting the targets. Work on starting with your reticle off the targets, like it will be in-game, getting your aim onto the next one as quickly as you can without overshooting, and get the target down while missing as few shots as possible. C-rank players are still learning what kind of weapons they like, and that's a process that will continue for a while. But I started to see some really smart, thoughtful choices of weapons and good understanding of how to use them on a given map or mode. This Rapid Blaster is doing a lot of things right. He's using a longer range weapon on the bridge that doesn't allow players to approach it through their ink, so he can hit them before they hit him. He's using a blaster to flush players off the tower, using that area of effect burst damage to make the entire tower unsafe to stay on. Good on you, Ben. Remember that Splatling from the C-Rank video who never saw this flank coming? Now look at this B-Rank Splatling player. She knew it was coming before I had even done it once. Maybe she was watching my approach by using the map, or maybe she just knew it was a common flank route from prior experience, but she has a much more effective response even though she does lose the engagement in the end. Map knowledge is going to really pay off in B and C-Ranks. If you know a Rainmaker shortcut your opponents don't know how to defend against, it's game over. Players aren't going to be great about using the pillar in the middle of the tower to protect themselves, or aiming power clams at the basket fast enough to make a throw. Practicing these skills in recon mode gives you a leg up on your competition, and it should only take a few minutes of practice at the beginning of a rotation. One thing that B-Rank Splatling didn't see coming was when I approached from the railing. I don't really blame her, because at this rank I doubt anyone's tried to approach that way before. If you're not comfortable with your platforming, it's easy to fall off this ledge, and there are a lot of easier falls to avoid that you'll see happening in the lower ranks. 
But if you get that level of control of your Inkling, there are some crazy shortcuts, flank routes, hiding spots, and ambushes you can put together that will get you a lot of mileage no matter how early you implement them. Check out this fantastic video by Wadsum, a top-level slosher player, for some jumps, scouting spots, and tricks that will change the way that you think about a lot of these maps. Sometimes playing solo queue just feels like a random crapshoot of a thing where nobody works together, and sometimes you splat enough opponents that maybe someone pushes the objective? It's like that even well into X rank to some degree. But in C rank, you may not even be sure your teammates know how the objective works. By B rank, that is something you can expect, and in fact, B rank players are, if anything, too focused on the objective. You're likely to see a lot of players standing right by the objective instead of establishing a zone of control around it and intercepting opponents on their way to defend. And it makes for some really lazy limbs with bombs or specials for the defending team. You'll see players try to push too early because they're seeing points tick down and figure, that's a good thing, keep going. They're not making sure their team actually has an advantage, so they just get the objective and go, 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 even though they're limiting the push they could have had if they had been patient and pushed safely. This Rainmaker carrier had friendly players that had so far successfully opened up a path for a push through the middle of the map, but the carrier instead went left and got ambushed before their teammates could rotate to support that move. In general, push the objective as far as you can while still feeling safe. If you're not threatened yet, be patient and see if you can push it further. If you've pushed a long way and you're close to lead without much time left, a suicide push might be worth it, but don't make a desperate one that won't work. Quick side note, now that you're in B rank, you've unlocked League mode. This won't impact your individual rank, and we won't cover it in this series, but if you're ever looking for a break to get your head back in the right place, or you're just feeling more like playing with some friends, remember that you have that option now. If you don't have friends who play and you can't convince anyone new to try, there are always streamers on Twitch and elsewhere playing with fans by exchanging friend codes online. It's a great way to get dialed into the community where you can make some friends, have some fun, learn some new things, and if you keep going and get more serious about it, take the first steps toward competitive goals, like learning to find and play scrims and finding a steady team. Or you could just squid party with them. I've become one of them. A game will always be just a game until you make a community out of it. So be safe about it, kids talk to your parents about being safe online, for real. But don't hesitate to put yourself out there. For more splat strats, follow Bravest Esports. And if you're looking for some more individualized coaching about in-game techniques, connecting to your local community, and building a competitive mindset, Consider checking out our youth esports leagues for Splatoon 2, Smash Ultimate, Rocket League, and more.